Compliments of the season and thank you for keeping a date with us once again on the program Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. A program that updates with information on the huge potentials of Nigeria's agricultural sector and the efforts of governments and other stakeholders to develop the sector. I'm your regular host, Gabriel Ojile. As the year runs out, it is time to take stock and make decisions to forge ahead in the new year. It is on this premise that we will, in this episode, review the technologies developed by Cocoa Research Institute Nigeria and the National Institute for Horticultural Research to advance production and value addition of cash crops. Before then, we have news of activities of the Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Keep watching. Ensure that we provide the necessary policy direction that will truly position agriculture as the mainstay of our economy. The federal government is removing obstacles and offering opportunities for self-employment, wealth creation and food security in the Nigeria's agricultural sector. Think farming, think agriculture. Watch Transforming Agriculture in Nigeria. Showing on NTA Fridays at 8.30 p.m. In our diary tonight, Nigeria and neighboring countries explore ways of surmounting climate change and farmers' headers conflict. Also, federal government launches National Rice Development Strategy 2. These, among other stories, will come your way after the break. The Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, in collaboration with United Nations Development Program and the Food and Agricultural Organization, organized a two-day regional summit on climate change and farmers' headers conflict with the theme, Promoting Regional Peace and Climate Security in the Livestock and Crop Farming Sectors. The event, which took place in Abuja, attracted stakeholders from Ghana, Niger, Cameroon, Benin Republic, and Chad. To climate change effect. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mahmoud Mahmoud Abubakar, in a keynote address urged the stakeholders to brainstorm and find lasting solutions to address the challenges of climate change and the farmers' headers conflicts in Nigeria, in neighboring countries and the West African subregion as a whole. One of the key driver deliverables expected at the end of this important summit is a concrete and actionable recommendation for combating this quagmire that is fueling the farmer harder conflict and hastening insecurity in Nigeria and in the region in particular. The livestock industry in Nigeria and West Africa has huge potential for sustainable employment of millions of people through its numerous value chains. Hence, it is an industry to be handled with kid gloves. Consequently, I encourage you to brainstorm, discuss and compare notes at national and regional key players in the livestock industry and climate security sector and arrive at the common objective this summit seeks to achieve, which is promoting regional peace and climate security in the livestock subsector. In a communique issued at the end of the summit, the stakeholders recommended mainstreaming of climate smart strategy in livestock and crop farming, establishment of federal and state ministries of livestock and fishery development, comprehensive review of traditional systems and models of conflict resolution, peace building and climate change resistance committee with members drawn from Nigeria and neighboring countries among other recommendations. Promote utilization of early warning systems by national and state governments in the region to mitigate the occurrence of conflict. 11. Ensure the immediate launching of the national programs on pasture and animal feed development in states and regions to improve the integration of the crop livestock nexus for greater cohesion, productivity, and value addition. In an effort to enhance the production of rice to meet local demand and export as well as job creation, the federal government has launched National Rice Development Strategy 2, which will run between 2022 to 2030. The Minister of State, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Mustafa Baba Sheuri, with other dignitaries, launched a strategic document and also unveiled the competitive African rice platform in Abuja. Speaking during the launch, the Minister of State said that National Rice Development Strategy 1 recorded tremendous successes. Mustafa added that the new document will consolidate on the successes recorded so far. 
national rights development strategy two document is a 10 year plan which seeks to provide direction for the development of rights sector to achieve government goals of self sufficiency in rice production, food and nutrition security, employment creation, and production of surplus for export. Also speaking there on the occasion, the governor of Kebi State, Abuakar Atiku Bangudu, commended the Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development and Development Partners for the effort made in the implementation of the first document. Abuakar also appealed for support for women who are into rice milling. Prior to 2015, in most states of the Federation, rice processing is dominated by women. But now we have big milling companies increasingly participating in the milling. So we need more support to ensure that small-scale mills that can produce rice to, in those, to, that, to the quality of the big mills are supported. We support those women processors so that as we make progress in the rice journey, the women even play a bigger role rather than a smaller role. High point of the event was the launching of the competitive African rice platform CAP to bring stakeholders in the rice value chain together to advance the production of African rice. Speaking at the occasion, the chairman of the competitive African rice platform Nigeria, Peter Dama, stated that CAP Nigeria would further mobilize stakeholders on best practice, link farmers and millers together to enhance the production and processing. We in CAP Nigeria will therefore ensure we promote transformation in the Nigerian rice sector following the guidelines of NRSD 2 document. This will therefore enable us in assisting, in, in, uh, enable us to deliver healthy, high quality, nutritious rice to consumers. <music>The federal government recently inaugurated a steering committee to implement the Food and Agricultural Organization FAO Hand in Hand Initiative, which aims at eliminating poverty, hunger, and inequalities in line with the global development goals by developing agricultural value chains. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, who inaugurated the committee in his office in Abuja, would serve as its chairman. Other members of the committee include the Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Minister of Environment, Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Borno State Governor, FAO Country Representative, President of All Farmers Association, among others. Speaking during the inauguration ceremony in Abuja, the minister spelled out the task ahead of the committee and urged them to work in harmony to achieve the set objectives. The National Steering Committee shall be the highest organ in the governance structure of the Honeyman Initiative in Nigeria. The NSC will provide overall political leadership, strategic direction and guidance for the implementation of Honeyman Initiative in Nigeria in line with the national priorities. The NSC will also be responsible for providing oversight for the implementation of key initiatives in Nigeria and will receive periodic progress report on the implementation of Hanin An from the task team. Speaking earlier, the country director of Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, Fred Kaferu, stated that the first phase of the initiative would give priority to value chain development of priority crops, which include rice, sorghum, soybeans, maize, tomatoes, and cassava. Other areas include dairy and fish feed development, while the second phase would focus on humanitarian and social issues. In the dairy and fisheries, uh, the issue of mobilizing investments for improved breeding, feed uh, and fodder, very important, especially for the dairy, and also looking at cold chain uh, collection systems, particularly if we're talking about aquaculture. 
Also speaking during the inauguration, the Minister of Water Resources, Engineer Suleiman Hassan Adamu, said his ministry would work hand in hand with the committee to make the initiative a success in Nigeria. When it comes to issues of food security, uh, we're talking essentially, first of all, of agriculture. And uh, by whatever method you are going to talk about agriculture, you can't do without water. Other ministers and members of the committee expressed commitment to the implementation of the program. Nigeria is the fourth largest producer of cocoa beans in the world, after Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana and Indonesia. It is a crop that has the potential for creating huge employment opportunities along its value chain. In our next segment, we will highlight the research breakthroughs made by Cocoa Research Institute Ibadan and the National Horticultural Research Institute in developing cash crops in Nigeria. Sit back and watch. Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria, Crane, is a national institute with the mandate to research into genetic improvement and value addition of five crash crops of economic importance to Nigeria, namely cocoa, cola, coffee, cashew, and tea. The institute has made a lot of breakthroughs in research work, which have enhanced the production of its mandate crops. Research into cocoa has significantly made improved varieties of cocoa. The new varieties can produce in two years after planting, instead of the five years taken by the old varieties. Through the research that we have, that we have done over the years, we have been able to increase the yield of, uh, of the uh, varieties of, of the varieties that we have now uh, that are better than what we already have. For example, initially the materials that I mentioned might be producing about uh, uh, 500 uh, kg, 500 kg per hectare. But now we have uh, materials that produce 2,000 kg per hectare. To start any cash crop farming in Nigeria, it requires the consideration of some factors that will determine the success of the farming. Researches made by the crane also avail the farmers the necessary advice that can help them to succeed in cocoa farming and other crops under the mandate of crane. We have developed different animal feeds from byproducts, be it uh, goat feed, pig feed, uh, poultry feed, even snail feed, all this uh, akakatina, akakatina of uh, the type of uh, uh, African giant uh, snail, we have developed uh, feed from there. Besides that, we have developed uh, organic fertilizer from byproduct of cocoa. The effort of crane is not only restricted to production of cocoa, but also in value addition of cocoa. In this regard, a lot of breakthroughs have also been made. We have produced a lot of products and byproducts from cocoa, which have Ella mentioned that are lying on the shelf. And we have been able through research, we have been able to produce cocoa breads, which has certain percentages of cocoa materials in it. This, this bread is selling very, very, very hotly in the market. And people, it has health benefits and people are happy with it. We have developed a thermoresistant chocolate that, you know, the confessional chocolate, if you don't put it inside the fridge, it will melt. This thermoresistant, if you put it on your table, it will not melt for hours. So this is a breakthrough. Coffee is another cash crop the crane has also made great research breakthroughs. The cloned coffee is one of the research findings of the institute that has had great impact on yield and year of maturity. With these new technologies, farmers can get 2,000 kilograms per hectare compared to 500 kilograms per hectare of farmland in unimproved variety. Also, the maturity age has been reduced to between two to three years. One thing that we have discovered about uh, coffee is that a lot of farmers have abandoned their plots due to maybe uh, low yield, some due to poor marketing of the commodity, and then some will say the, the way they process it, so many problems. But the one that we have found out that needs urgent attention is the, the farms are too old. 
and the, the yield are too low. So what we have done now is to re uh, rejuvenate those plots, those plantations. We, we've been to, for the past uh, three, four years, we have been at Kaba, which is the major uh, growing area for Robusta. And uh, we have trained the farmers how they can rejuvenate their farms. Rejuvenation can take the process of giving them the improved variety that I've told you that can yield up to 2,000 kg, 2, kg per hectare. Also in coffee production, research into value addition has yielded many good results. Instead of us just exporting raw bean at very cheap uh, amount, we do the processing. I told you about the machine that I've been developed. One, from the popping to the husking to frying and to milling. Now, when you do all those processes, you've added value. And once those value, instead of you now exporting raw bean, you've added value and that will help in increasing the value that we are going to get in the international market. Two, we encourage local consumption. By the time you are consuming, instead of now us now importing materials that are, uh, have been uh, added additives that is going to kill us, or dangerous to our health, then you have raw coffee that have been processed in Nigeria without any additive from field to table. The National Horticultural Research Institute has made great and impactful researches in horticultural plants such as mango, orange, pineapple, among others. Aside researching into the production of hamandid crops, NIHORT has been able to discover technologies which result in value addition of the mandate crops as showcased during the 45th National Council on Agriculture and Rural Development for adoption by the relevant stakeholders in the agricultural value chain. This is our biopesticide, NIHOT Ratkin, a technology developed locally and has been shown to be effective against the control of Tuta Absoluta, the popular tomato Ebola that ravaged and is still ravaging tomato farms in Nigeria. We also have our tutor tray where the farmer can just put in the middle of the farm and it will trap these insects. And here on our table we have array of products. We have our teas, we call them antioxidant teas. They have been developed from our fruits and vegetables. Ginger, Symbocitra, that's lemongrass, uh, Sabdarifa, that zobo leaf, and they are very beneficial for health. This is our pineapple slices, dry-rated pineapple slices. And here we have a storage, uh, a shelf life of about one year. You can sit in the comfort of your living room and enjoy tasty slices. The Institute has also discovered that banana waste can be used to produce other products useful to humans. Interestingly, we also have a soap gel developed from banana and plantain waste. All those plantain stalk, plantain peels that we throw away, we have made use of them and make it into paste. The Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria and the Nigeria Horticultural Research Institute have over the years taken some of these technologies to the end users. In our next segment, we will see the relationship between Crane and Cocoa Farmers Association in Nigeria amongst other partners and the impact of the technologies on productions and value addition. Keep watching. The Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria has transferred several technologies to the various stakeholders that it partners with. Top amongst its partners is the Cocoa Farmers Association of Nigeria, Cocoa Association of Nigeria, as well as the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. Through its collaboration with the Cocoa Farmers Association of Nigeria, CIFAN, the Institute has been able to pass many of its technologies to farmers that are members of this association. Crane has been making a kind of, uh, how do I say, they have been working in terms of making sure they give us new breeds. The federal government too have been able also to work with Green and work with CIFA and work with Cocoa Zone and Nigeria together to make sure that we provide the new breed that gives our farmers about two metric tons per one per hectare. 
these are what the new breed that the, the and it takes 18 months in terms of fermentations in terms of sun dry we have also been able to instill it on our farmers to make sure that come the only way that those people eating chocolate can have value have a good aroma of nigerian cocoa and put more money into it is to make sure that we ferment very well the use of these technologies by the farmers has increased production as testified by the Farmers Association. The National Coffee and Tea Association of Nigeria, an umbrella body for coffee and tea farmers in Nigeria, is leaving no stone unturned in propagating coffee cultivation. The Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria is one of the many bodies that the association collaborates with in its quest to bring further development to coffee cultivation in Nigeria. Early this year, we hosted what we call All Stakeholders in Agri Industry Summit, where we brought over 30 agencies, federal institutes, uh, of takers, name it, including even agro rangers to come and tell us how to secure our farms. Uh, even railway to tell us how we can ferry our produce. We brought these people and we are, going, we are producing a document we call uh, uh, a document that will be a working document for agriculture, not only in your state. If God willing, it could be expanded. People are now very, very, they are much, much more aware about coffee in your state. I've received several calls. In fact, some of them started buying 1,000 seedlings, Axe uh, cream. And they've started, so we've started propagating this because we know that uh, it's, it's, a, it's a big money, especially export money, Anna. A new training manual for extension agents that would be used to train cocoa farmers for more productivity of cocoa in Nigeria has been developed and presented to the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. The manual was developed by the Partnership for Development Committee an arm of Cocoa Soils program in collaboration with Cocoa Research Institute in West Africa, International Institute of Tropical Agriculture and other stakeholders. It is aimed at enhancing development and dissemination of integrated soil fertility management for cocoa and to increase cocoa productivity in West Africa. The manual was designed to enhance cocoa yield and extension service. During the handover ceremony, the minister stated the commitment of the ministry to disseminate the findings to cocoa farmers and also looking beyond production and making effort to support value addition of cocoa. It has brought out things that are causing hindrance in becoming even better than what we used to be. So with this, we will know what to avoid the pitfalls. This must have been discovered during this uh, period of research so that we can avoid those and be uh, just as good as any other country. In fact, Nigeria should be the best uh, cocoa uh, producing country in the world. I think now it's time for us to even start not just exporting the raw cocoa, but the cocoa uh, powder so that we'll increase the value chain, will increase income for the farmers, producers of cocoa. In strengthening partnership, the National Horticultural Research Institute, NIHORT, expects private players to popularize its technologies as the institute is willing to release the technologies to whoever wants to go into the production of processing of its mandate crops. We would originally advise that you come to us or write to us, email us, give us a phone call and we, we can work with you. Like I said, we have substations all around the country. We have here in Jos, we have in Imo State, Mbato, we have in Gombe, we have in Kanu. So at least you'll find one of our substations very close to you that in fact sometimes we have to visit your farm take soil samples and see is this appropriate for what you want to do so i would say that please work with us right from when you are conceptualizing the idea and we'll walk you through even up to the market level we can still return nigeria to a prominent position in the production of cocoa beans the need to do so in the present dispensation is imperative and the focus is going beyond simply producing the beans to actually production of cocoa-based products. This is the much we can take on this episode. Enjoy the season. I'm Gabriel Ojilia. See you next week.